Hello everybody, Gamer Penny here bringing you another episode of our Final Fantasy 14 online let's play and we are back with Vesper and today we're going to take a break from the story just for a little bit. We'll probably get back to it at the end of this um, but we're going to come here and we're going to do the egg hunt. What is this? Easter? It's... <laughs> I forget what... <laughs> Hatching Tide. <laughs> That's it. Hatching Tide. Greetings, friend, and happy Hatching Tide to you. May I say that you look exquisite as always, Vesper? Tis always a pleasure. Oh, and I am most eager to share my latest dream with you. It was highly peculiar, to say the least. See, I beheld visions of that chilling creature of legend, the Tonberry. If past experience has taught me anything, is that painstakingly recreating my dreams is sure to bring about good fortune. However, as Tonberries are not but figments of old fables, I began to doubt whether I could do justice to their mere ghastly appearance. Oh. But all that changed when this gentleman generously offered his assistance. Greetings, my lady. My name is Hamlin, and I am what you might call a supreme connoisseur and passionate affectionado of all things Tonberry. <laughs> oh no. As you may or may not be aware, Tonberries have heads as round and adorable as an egg, which is why I believe they are a perfect addition to the Hatching Tide festivities. So I donned the superior mantle of Tonberry and presented myself to Miss Geely here. <laughs> what luck, wouldn't you agree? Hamlin was kind enough to furnish our other volunteers with Tonberry guises, and we're all hard at work preparing for the upcoming fun. And a lot of eggy stabby shall it f fun shall it be. <laughs> exactly! That's the spirit of Hatching Tide, perhaps without the stabby part. Considering my dream, I think that these festivities present a unique opportunity to share the Tonberry's charm with the world. There is but one problem. A group of sylphs has been making mischief throughout town, playing pranks, sabotaging the decorations. Luckily, it seems a mere glance of the Tonberry form is enough to send those leafy brigands fleeing in terror. Is it not remarkable how such an adorable visage can strike such fear in the hearts of some? Does not the contradiction of the Tonberry's nature invigorate your very soul? <laughs> Other volunteers are using their Tonberry guises to shoo away the sylphs as best they can, but we still find ourselves short-handed. Would you be willing to assist us, Vesper, just until the mischief is mitigated? My sincerest thanks. Hamlin has prepared a plethora of guises for us, so I'm sure he has one that fits you. Oh, gosh. This guy. Tonberry guy. Okay. Talk to him. Now then, let us commence with the most sacred of ceremonies. Come closer. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh my gosh. Chew away, sylphs. Guys, does a tonberry. Yeah, look at us, man. We look sick. Well, if these ones can't have fun with tusked ones, walking ones won't have any fun either. This one will make sure of it. How about some eggy, eggy stabbed fun? <laughs> ah, monstrous one! This is why these ones needed tusked ones. Tusked ones? Yeah, there's one down here, and there's one over here. Excited amphibian lover. Hide well, warty one, then spring out and make the walking one screech and jump. Hehe, <laughs> this one can't wait. Let's have some eggy, eggy, stabby fun. Aye! Scary one, scary one is here! Flee, flee! <laughs> Put a frog in there. <laughs> and one down here. But, but if these ones are naughty, Elder One will become Scolding One. 
No one will know it was these ones. Besides, it isn't that naughty. Hehe. <laughs> Don't be naughty. Have eggy, eggy, stabby fun. Yeah, but please, this one didn't mean any harm. Eek, sticky one, get it away. <laughs> Why are the sylphs coming in here and doing mischief, man? <laughs> That's funny. All right. Ooh. Alright, Hamlin, we did it. I trust you returned from a job well done? I'm sure Miss Geely would like to hear the par particulars. You may relay your report after I relieve you of that outfit. <laughs> Why is he so weird? Is he actually a Tonberry? <laughs> I'm glad to hear those sylphs fluttered back home. Thank you for all your help, Vesper. Yes, you performed most admirably, not only in deed, but in dress. Upon beholding the Tonberry performing such selfless acts of valor, the citizens of Gridania are sure to have warmed to our adorable paragons of pointy justice, all according to plan. Our other volunteers are currently making the rounds and checking the rest of the decorations for any residual surprises, but I dare say we should be able to officially begin the celebration soon. All that's left is to wait for our Archon eggs to arrive from Ulda. Which reminds me, Master Pollen sends his regards. He is currently recovering from injuries sustained from a particularly sharp beak, and will therefore be unable to attend Hatching Tide this year. But he generously sent us dozens and dozens of delightful eggs. So many, in fact, we had to commission the Goldsmiths Guild to help with their decoration. I hope you enjoy the festivities. Something tells me this shall be a Hatching Tide to remember. We- we have a problem! Anoda, whatever is the matter? It's the eggs, Julie, the Archon eggs. Sylph swarmed the shipment as it entered the central shroud and zapped the delivery mammoth into a frenzy. The caravan has been brought to a complete standstill. Uh-oh. If only you had seen it. The chaos, the carnage, the eggs, the beautiful Archon eggs scattered around the ground, sylphs pilfering them like spriggans, and that smoking mammoth rampaging like an owl goat possessed. Twas sheer mayhem, Geely. The sylphs presented no demands, offered no reason behind their rampant pillaging, but they did keep squeaking about tusked ones, and no fair, and why should walking ones have all the fun? What do you suppose they meant? Ah, I heard the Sylphs once held an annual spring festival, but there was an incident involving one of their fighting boars. I believe that was the end of such festivities. I understand how it must be a pain to them to see us cheerfully preparing for hatching tide, but those ill-gotten eggs won't ease their suffering. We must find a way to recover them. Hey, if I may be so bold, I believe I have a perfect solution to your conundrum. Vesper's assistance will be crucial, however. You will lend us your aid, yes? Get unnerving undulation. Okay. You wish to lend your strength to my brilliant plan, do you? Very well. Our divine mission is as follows. We must adorn ourselves in the guise of the Tonberry, scare the sylphs away from the fallen eggs. Ahem. It may seem like a rather familiar tactic, but terror cuts as sharply as a knife in the right hands, as does the power of the Tonberry. We shall remind those sylphs of what adorable horror lurks in the shadow. It is time to take the Tonberry's naturally winsome and captivating visage and transform it into a mask of pure evil. Observe. <laughs> We're all scared. I suppose that makes sense, but what of the delivery mammoth? In his panic stake, it may easily mistake us for not but common egg thieves, or perhaps not so common considering the guises. That's where Vesper's participation is crucial. Even an overexcited automaton is no match for an adventurer versed in the arts of warfare. Of course, I shan't be so cruel as to send you into battle as defenseless as a swaddled ton babe. 
You may rely upon me to perform the necessary enhancements upon your guides and shall grant any stabby sweetheart the ability to withstand even the harshest of electrified zaps. In theory, anyway. In the midst of adversary, adversity lies opportunity, as they say. Or rather, in the midst of scattered Archon eggs stands the noble Tonberry, that all might witness its triumphant glory. Very well, let us proceed with Hamlin's plan and see that our eggs are recovered safely. Hmm, excellent. I shall commence the intent in enhancement of this guise at once and have it ready for deployment in two flicks of a Tonberry's blade. Vesper, let us meet where the bells of destiny toll. To arms. Okay. Do we have to do a fade or something? Ah, uh, complete the fate, don't be selfish in Central Shroud. Okay. We will go and do that. Um, what is completed over here? Chaos, carnage, and eggs. Oh, the fate's up. Going to fate. I can't move. Turn in my two at least. Okay, we gotta wait till the next fate. We got three eggs. We did it, but I feel like three eggs is not going to be enough for us to buy everything. Well, let's go. We can just do it later as well. I want to do it on a different server because there was no one here for this one. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Ah, uh, here comes our hero now. Hamlin was just has just been regaling us with the tale of your valor, Vesper. We can't thank you enough for recovering those Archon eggs. Truly, from the bottom of our hearts and purses, thank you. My single regret is that no rapturous bystanders were present in those solitary woods to witness such valorous displays. Alas, the Tonberry's majesty will once again pass unacknowledged. Yet such is often the way with true goodness. The hero that works in secrecy for the betterment of all? My friends, their name is Tonberry. Found, I'm sure. I must say, Hamlin, your unflagging devotion to all things Tonberry is both remarkable and admirable. <laughs> um, pardon me? We were in the solitary woods and we saw what you did for us, or what the Tonberries did for us. I was heartbroken when a self snatched away the Archon egg that my friend had given me. But thanks to you, it was recovered safely. You Tonberries have my eternal thanks. I only wish you didn't have to scare the sylphs so badly, the poor things. Is there no other way to deter their mischief? My Tonberry senses are tingling. <laughs> you 
Indeed, consider this. If we decorate our eggs with a tonberry theme, the sylphs wouldn't dare snatch or sabotage them. A dark green coat on a large egg with two golden circles for eyes. Not bad at all. E perhaps even cute. <laughs> really, perhaps this is what your dream foretold. Not just tonberry guises, but tonberry eggs and decorations as well. In which case, we should send word to our old and goldsmiths that we'd like another batch of Archon eggs with some striking shades of Tonberry. Of course, all our eggs are packaged during transit, meaning the Sylphs will likely continue the mischief outside the city. I'm tempted to send a Tonberry guard with a caravan, but the road from Old Da is far too long to attempt in such a guise. We shall continue to consider possible alternatives, but in the meantime, should you happen to come across another waylaid shipment, I hope I can count on your assistance. Er, as a Tonberry, of course. Well, seeing as our Archon eggs have finally arrived, I dare say it is time to officially get Kraken. Let the Hatching Tide festivities begin. Yay! Not easy being green. Alright, so we got this. A 2B card. That. This. This. That. And I got three eggs. Um, do you think this guy? Yep. Papaya de master. <laughs> um, yeah, we need to do it more to get the full set. I think I'll buy Papaya de Mastered. Get my three eggs. Use that. Okay. Cool, so that was the egg festival. Um look at it, you can dye it. Let's go back to Bent Branch. See if we can't catch it again. Maybe there will be people there. It's gonna be impossible if no one's there. It was down way. Papaya. Okay. No one's here though. one of them and three archon eggs go oh we're getting much more this time I'm gonna be down for the count there we go Stop it! Okay, let's turn in what we can. Fifteen eggs! Holy smokes!
Okay. Down for the count. Stop it! They're all... Three of them over there. Down for the count, down for the count, down for the count. So get some more in. Ew. Eleven more eggs. Okay. I don't want to go back in there. <laughs> we'll wait a minute. That's chaos. Up, up. Whoa. A couple other people doing it. Scared three of them right there. I recovered 26 eggs. Hopefully that's enough to get the gold, you know? wonder how many eggs you'll get from that. So I want to get the whole Tonberry outfit. Ten! Oh, okay, we did. We did it. Okay, let's go back to New Bredania. Thank you for the heels, Wing Sauce. <laughs> He's helping me out quite a bit. Okay, now let's go to Edo's Amphitheater. See if we can. Ten should get us. Let's see. Head, body, hands, legs, feet. It should get us the whole thing. Two. Four. Six. Eight. Ten. And I don't really care about the picture, so. Alright, cool. We did it. We got a whole Tonberry outfit. Um. I think what we'll do now is we'll continue on the main story quest. Let's head back to Lenosia. Limsalominsa. Um, we'll go over here. Maybe we'll dress up as a Tonberry at some point. All right. By way of a first step, I suggest we split up and make inquiries around town. Someone must know this sickard. If you could approach the pirates, Vesper, and the rest of us will seek out merchants and adventurers. Okay. Upper decks, maybe? We want to go to the aft castle and then marauders. Look at all the eggs. Prettiest collector. Papaya. Roswin. Eh? You wanna know about Sickard? He's a wily bugger is what he is. 
Found some clever way to make coin, they say, and traded it for Monskit's place in the old Hilfer's side. There was this- there was a time we raced the executioners for our pick at the Empire's fleet, but the Garleans are gone, and them days with them. Owing to which, we've all of us had to look for other ways to make men ends meet, with that jumped up bilge rat sickered landing the juiciest whatever it may be. Now that we sirens are struggling, mind, we do well enough guarding fishing boats from the fishbacks and other beasties. Get to the first pick of produce for our trouble, see? Quality stuff at a bargain price. This this we pass to our sisters as we can't sail on account of getting old or wounded or, ch or with child, and they cook it up and sell it a pretty profit. Simple. Oh, I miss the old ways, don't get me wrong, but when I see the girls with their little ones, I think to myself, a life of peace and quiet ain't all that bad. Interesting. They would suffer from not having, like, trouble with beast tribes, right? Okay, now we go to Marauder's Guild. Papaya. Hey, you know Sickard? Curious about Sickard, are you? As am I, my friend, as am I. Sadly, I know nothing of the man, save that the bloody executioners experienced a marked improvement in their fortunes after his promotion. Quite how he achieved this is a matter of some debate. As you know, the the last cross is the last crossy permits us to attack only Garlean vessels, yet these have all but vanished from the seas since the Empire turned in upon itself. In order to adapt, we Krakens have taken to trading with the East, but the executioners are less forward-looking. I cannot imagine they would willingly abandon the old ways. So how, then, are they lining their coffers? Whatever their secret, they are not like to share it with their rivals, but mayhap you will have more luck. Speak with Elfino. Where is Elfino? Back down here. Back down here. Let's bring out a new minion. Had that rabbit. What minion came out? Oh, just a Moogle, okay. I see everyone has returned. Now who would like to go first? So, just as their imperial prey began to disappear, Sickard turned the executioner's fortunes around with a mysterious new source of income. Whatever it is, it's nothing to scoff at. According to a tavern keeper I spoke to, the crew have been indulging themselves as never before, but no amount of drink seems to loosen their tons as to how they are coming by their coin. For my part, I spoke with a reporter for the Harbor Herald. The publication has been investigating the secret of the executioner's good fortune and making little headway. Plainly, the executioners do not wish the nature of their business to be made public. And I think I may know why. In the course of making inquiries on Hawker's Alley, an interesting fact came to light. Just as the executioners began to enjoy better fortunes, the price of crystal went into sharp decline. A sudden fall in demand, I was told. Curious, I contacted Hori Boulder, who has been watching the movements of the beast tribes, and my suspicions were proven correct. Despite ever worsening relations between the beast tribes and the Thalas Thalas Prasi, neither Titan nor Leviathan have made an appearance of late, suggesting that the Kobolds and Sahagen lack the means with which to summon them. Do you mean to say the executioners are divesting them of their crystals? All indications point to that conclusion, yes, though we have no hard evidence as yet. We must investigate further. Agreed, so how do we proceed? 
Oh, I have an idea about that. In fact, I've already taken the liberty of making certain provisions. Interesting. What have you done? Alfino looks like a man with a plan, did it say? <laughs> During my inquiries, a disgruntled merchant informed me that a wholesaler of crystals had recently arrived in Limsa offering wares at prices far undercutting the competition. After asking around, I was able to gain an introduction and will shortly pose as a potential buyer in a bid to establish the crystal's provenance. The man is due to be at Ocean's Embrace in Lower Lenosia shortly. I suggest we make our way there at once. Okay. Ocean's Embrace. Do 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 appears to be our merchant. Wish me luck. Wait. If he truly is in league with the bloody executioners, he will surely be wary of those allied to the Admiral, the Scions not least of all. Compared to yours and Vespers, mine is an unfamiliar face. Let me play the role of buyer. Rafa is right. And even if you aren't recognized on sight, you look too genteel to be mixing with society's underbelly. Genteel! Very well, I leave it to you, Graha. <laughs> she called him genteel. Uh, got business with me, cat boy? <laughs> I don't know why that tickled me <laughs> so much. Oh. oh god, the little lollipop. <laughs> got business with me, cat boy? <laughs> I... Ahem, you're the crystal wholesaler? <laughs> that I am, but you're no merchant. So what do you want the crystals for? Um, I, er... <laughs> Don't look at us, you idiot. You'll give yourself away. Oh, I see. You're a weaponsmith, am I right? And you need crystals to make staffs like that fine specimen you've got there. Th that's right. I am indeed a weaponsmith, and I use naught but the finest materials. I bid you show me your wares. Well, we don't invite just anybody into our storehouses. It takes time to establish trust, you understand. Look, I have a large and urgent commission. If the quality is satisfactory, I will not quibble over the price. Alright, it's plain that it's no ordinary crystal adorning your staff, so I'll make an exception. Come with me. It seems to be working. Let's follow them. Alright. We'll see where they went. I don't think I've ever seen that fate before.
They went into that tunnel. Quietly now. You won't find any finer, especially not for the price. Indeed. I would expect to pay more than double for such quality. How could they possibly be so cheap? There's nothing unlawful about them, if that's your worry. They're from Ogamoro, if you take my meaning. Stuff's as pure as it gets. You won't be disappointed, so how much do you want? Ogamoro, take it from the kobolds, just as we suspected. Uh-oh. That's enough. Shut your gobs and turn around, slowly. Hello. I'm Sickard, acting captain of the Bloody Executioners. No need to introduce yourselves. We know who you are, Scions. We also know you've been chatting to the Admiral. Got eyes and ears everywhere, see? Comes with being the only true pirate crew left in Limsa. So we've, we've established you ain't here to buy crystals. The question is, what are you here for? You are bold to reveal yourself to us without knowing our objective, but that would explain your rise swift your swift rise to power. You have spoken plain, and so I shall return to the favor. We came here to learn why the bloody executioners opposed the Admiral's will. And we know and we have our answer. Should Limsa Limits and make peace with the Kobolds, you would lose your source of your newfound wealth. That's right. Just to remind you, though, we ain't breaking any rules here. The law forbids us from attacking any vessel not flying the Imperial flag, but it doesn't say nothing about beastmen. Only reason we keep our operation nice and quiet, because we don't want no one taking our business. Wait. Just listen to the end, will you? For what it's worth, I have the highest respect for you and yours. Her, especially. While the Maelstrom were worrying about dirtying their fancy red clobber, you lot stormed Ugamaro and battered Bleeding Titan himself. Raised a mug to you when I heard the news. And now we're following in your footsteps, making sure the Beastmen never summon their stinking gods again. Practically your successors, we are. When there were still Imperial ships about, we did our bit for Limsa and went after them. But once the Garlean's gone, there's no one left to ply our trade on except the Beastmen. So let us have that, eh? It's only fair. Contentious though some may find your views, it is true that you have broken no laws. That being so, I see no reason why you should not state your case directly to the Admiral's face. Unless the acting captain of the only true pirate crew, pirate crew left in Limsa Lominsa has some other cause to hide in a cave. Huh. Well said. Well said indeed. Alright. I'll meet with the Admiral. I'll even provide the venue. The Astelicia. I trust she won't turn down the invitation. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. I thought myself the hunter, but it turns out I was the prey. A timely reminder that the pirate powers of Limsa Lomensa are not to be trifled with. 
But all is well that ends well. Grahatia's timely provocation had the desired effect, and Sigurd has agreed to a meeting. Let us hurry back to Limsa Limitsa and pass on his invitation to the Admiral. Okay, we can do it. Go do that. We'll go, 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 <laughs> go, go, do that. Papaya. What are you wearing on your head? Oh, <laughs> it, looks, it looked weird. I couldn't tell what it was. Go see what the Admiral has to say. Welcome back, my friends. What news? So they've been stealing crystals from the kobolds. My thanks for solving the mystery and securing a meeting besides. Suffice it to say, I accept Sickard's invitation, and I would have you join me as my guests. The future of Limsa hangs upon the outcome of this meeting, and I would have the Scions present to bear witness. Look who's come crawling! Traitor! Dang. You can shove your piece! Welcome aboard, Admiral. I'll wager you don't remember me. Sickard, acting captain of the bloody executioners, at your service. Twas kind of you to invite us. Now, if Captain Hillfear has a message for me, I bid you speak it. Hmm. We have just the one demand. That you forget this bilge about making peace with the Beastmen. Ours is a nation of pirates. Always has been, always will be. Deny us our right to plunder, and you deny who we are. Too bloody right! Pirates till we die! What we want, we take! I don't know what she hopes to get out of this. Piracy has no place in our future. Oh, dang. What'd she say? Pirates have no place? Our nation has prospered through piracy, tis true. Yet it is but one part of our long and storied history. Centuries ago, our ancestors led a failed rebellion and were driven from their homes with little more than the shirts on their backs. In fear of their lives, they sailed south until they came to these shores. Finding the land occupied by kobolds, however, they were forced to turn to piracy in order to survive. And survive they did. But not... Oops. And survive we did. Time after time we fought the Empire, and time after time we won, and through trade with our newfound allies. We prospered more than we ever did through pillaging and plundering. The Empire teeters on the brink of collapse. Ere long, provinces like Whirlit and Bosia and many others will regain their freedom. When they do, our matchless fleet will lead the world in a new golden age of commerce. The tides favor us and the ocean beckons with her vast bounty. But if we cling to the old ways, this great ship we call Limsa will trade the boundless seas for a lagoon. 
So we scorn the world's wealth for a plundered pittance then. Or shall we embrace change and thrive like our ancestors before us? The choice is yours. But if we are to prosper in the coming age, the whole of Vilbrand must become our ship, and a kobold and Sahagin our crewmates. Hmm. I mean, it's a nice speech. I'm Rouse in words. Yeah. Might even be some truth in them. But pirating's all we've ever known. And we ain't about to give it up just because you say so. Still, we're all the Minsons here and no one wants a war. So where does that leave us? Long before you became Admiral, I heard you was captain of the League of Lost Bastards. That true? If so, you'd know how we pirates settle our differences. A duel. Dang. Very well. As Admiral of Limsa Laminsa, I accept your challenge. Sigrid, are you sure? I've seen her in action, and uh, she's good. <laughs> I don't know about this. Over. Not till one of us is dead. Finish the job, or I will. Is that? Oh, it's the other captain. It's the captain, Captain Elfair. Ye fool! Twas over afore it began. Captain! Seems the whelps have been yapping while their master was abed. Listen well, all of ye! Since the signing of the Galadian Accord, we all of us have been part of the same crew. The crew with a good ship, Limsa Laminsa. At the helm of that ship is the Admiral. And tis she who decides where we sail. Was I not clear on that point? Or did you forget whose deck you stand on? Nay. Then what in the seven hells are you playing at? It's all we know, Captain. If we ain't pirates, what are we? You're bloody idiots is what you are. <laughs> idiots with your own lives ahead of ye. Ye can do anything ye want. Be anything ye want. We're pirates, I, and we pirates love our loot. But that ain't our first love. Our first love is the sea. The sea, and what she brings us. Freedom. 
So hold fast to that. Let the brine crusted usk that stands before you now be the last of them as new naught save out of steel. And make of yourselves a new breeder pirate! Lad, I made ye me right hand because I saw something in ye. And I still do. You have the makings of a captain. All you lack's the belief. Well now, it seems we're of one mind after all. <laughs> Apologies for the misunderstanding, Admiral. We're with ye, wherever ye be headed. He's got to be careful. He's gonna have a. You have my thanks, Hilfir. <coughs> oh. Your choice of dueling pistol did not escape my notice. Good old Annihilator. Ender of many a proud pirate's voyage. <laughs> Mistbeards vanished into legend, and it won't be long before I take my rest in the depths. Yet be that as it may, the old ways can only truly die when we've dealt the Empire the telling blow. There'll be stormy seas ahead, no doubt. But I'm trusting ye to steer us through to the other side. Hmm. That was sweet. I like that guy. I like Sickard too. He's just kind of a <laughs> dummy. Alright. Early wib. Though I had anticipated the duel, I did not foresee that Hilfer would intervene. But full glad that I that he did. It would have been a shame to kill the boy. Instead, the Welpel has learned a valuable lesson, and we have made peace amongst ourselves. All that remains is to do likewise with our neighbors. I'll take the eight. Now, I need hardly tell you, but any attempt to negotiate with the tribes is doomed to fail unless their minds can first be wrested from the grip of their gods. And so, in the meeting we seek to arrange with the kobolds, I would have you free their leader of Titan's influence. Leave it to us. We will open his ears to reason. You have my thanks. Ere we proceed, there is something you should know. Some fifty years passed when the Sahagans swarmed at our halls in ever greater numbers, Limsa entered into a covenant with the kobolds. To men shall go the bounty of the sea, to go kobolds shall go the bounty of the land, an ostensibly equitable arrangement, conspicuously lacking in detail. Aye, inadvertently or not, the wording was ambiguous, and we took advantage of it, moving in to claim the northern reaches of Lanosia, which the kobolds believed theirs. Bloodshed followed, then bloodshed to answer the bloodshed, and on and on it went, till every elm of Vilebrand bore the stain of our conflict. This is not history, you understand. It is the present, fresh and raw. And with their kindred's blood yet on our hands, we will struggle to regain the kobold's trust, even should we cure their temper. Admiral, you speak of obstacles we are like to encounter at the meeting, but as things stand, I see no reason why the kobolds would agree to a meeting in the first place. And so we must provide a reason. I will restore their stolen crystals to them and personally deliver the cargo along with my apologies. Bait. They would welcome us into their midst, not to speak of peace, but to have you at their mercy. Aye, and given the wealth of crystals we will bring, I'll wager they will attempt to summon Titan there and then. Meaning a high priest would need to be present, to whom we could administer the cure. Precisely. 
He is the fish I would catch, but he will not be alone. Nay, he will have guards on hand, and they will lay down their lives to protect him. Yet a single death on the kobold side would jeopardize our chance at peace, and there my venture founders. Yet it need not. What if we were to employ the Conqueror's Chain? Though we would still have to weaken the kobolds, it would allow us to subdue them without inflicting lasting harm. The artifact Mistbeard used to take goods and not life. I thought would serve. Well done, Marshal. So, friends, what thank you? What think you of our strategy? The effects of tempering are cumulative, and we may safely assume that the High Priestess' exposure to primal influence is extensive. It will therefore take a great deal of aether to reverse its effects, not to mention time. Time during which Alice will be defenseless. Even should we all look to her protection, I am not convinced we could keep an entire army of kobolds at bay. Well, I'm happy to take that risk. It's not as if we have any other choice. Besides, it's what Tessleen would do, and I have not followed her example, we wouldn't have a cure for tempering, much less a chance to bring peace to Vilebrand. So I'm going to cure that priest, or die trying. I believe in you, Alice. And I believe in you too, you and everyone. I know you'll keep me safe. It is settled then. See to your preparations and make for Camp Overlook. We will join you there anon. Alright, well we will do that, but we will do that in the next episode. So guys, I want to thank you so much for all of your support on this series. If you do want to see more of the Final Fantasy XIV online Let's Play, make sure to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. All right, bye-bye, everyone.